As promised, let's start with a definition. So by Six Sigma, we mean a data-driven method that we use to improve a process. In this method, we not only look at the data to analyze the process and to find the, the culprits, the root cause behind the problems. We also define something which we called the defects. In other words, things which don't give us the desired result. And we want simply to reduce them. In Six Sigma, you hope that by decreasing the defects, you will improve the quality of the process of the product delivered and the service. And in this way, you increase the customer satisfaction. Therefore, in short, you can say that Six Sigma is helping you by looking at data, identify what are the root causes behind the current problems and how to improve that. And let's have a look how you can actually do that. So the goal of Six Sigma, in other words, improving the process can be achieved in two ways. The first route, the first way is simply to improve the average result. However, on top of that, you can not concentrate on the improvement of the average result, but rather improve, increase the consistency of results to make the process more predictable. Those two routes should lead to what we have said so lower number of defects. And as we have said, this in turn should increase the customer satisfaction. So you either improve the average result or increase the consistency of the results. Preferably, you should go through those two routes. And now to show how this works in practice, let's have a look at an example. Let's imagine that we want to improve the process related to medical examination. In other words, the doctor's visit. And here we got the following data. We know that according to data we have gathered, the average doctor visit takes 20 minutes. And we also know that uh, the visits which are equal to 20 minutes and below make people happy. And if it's above 20 minutes, they are unhappy. So on the face of that, you would say that there is no problem. On average, we hit the target, so we are very good. However, if we look at the details, if we look at the data, you will see the following picture. So the average is 20. However, as you can see, there is actually an inconsistency in how we service the customer. Sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's 60 minutes. And here we've got results for 15 patients. The average is shown by this line. And this would mean that given our threshold of 20 minutes, we actually have almost half of the people unhappy with the service. So on average, we hit the target. However, we are in many cases much below the average time. And in other cases, we are much above the average, which makes people unhappy. So let's see what could actually Six Sigma try to do here. So once they establish this picture, so we know that people are unhappy with the service and we know the extent of that. So how many are defects, how many people are unsatisfied they would, as we said, look at two routes. So in the first one, we would try to decrease the average duration of the visit. In other words, we would try to go down from the current average duration of 20 minutes. And we can say that the goal could be, for example, 15 minutes. This most likely should increase the number of happy customers. So the percentage of people, patients being served with a lower than 20 minutes duration. The second route, as we said, is decrease the difference in duration, so improve the consistency. And here, the current difference between the maximal and minimal results is 15 minutes, It's because the maximal is 60 and the minimal is 10. And the Six Sigma could, for example, want to reduce this difference from the current 15 minutes to, let's say, 10 minutes. So both those ways could help us improve the picture we've got here. So increase the number of happy customers. So below the 20 minutes. Now, another important thing is that in Six Sigma, there are two most often used frameworks. The first one is the mic, which we will be using in this course. And this is used for improving existing processes. However, in many situations, you want to create a new product or a new process. And in this case, you would use a bit different approach, DMADV. And we will not discuss this in this course. However, in the presentation, you will find short information on this framework as well. So let's see what we actually mean by defects. And then we will look at the DMIC framework in more detail. 